If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the current in the 12 ohm resistor, what we're going to have to do is to take this very complex looking circuit and simplify it down to one that looks like the following in which there is only a single resistor. Now that's a step-by-step -step process that is going to require us to begin with the more complex circuit and then boil it down so that we have a circuit that has only one resistor. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Our first step would be to notice that these two resistors right here are in parallel to one another and as such we can combine them into a single resistor. In fact these two resistors here are also in parallel. Let's begin with the two that we circled first and remind ourselves the following equation for parallel resistors. Our goal right now will be to calculate what is known as the equivalent resistance of these two resistors. We will notice that they both have a resistance of 6 ohms. So we're going to be plugging in 6 ohms in for R1 and also for R2. For clarity, we have omitted the unit of ohms. Now these are fractions with common denominators so they can be added together to produce 2 6 and then once you're at this stage where you have a fraction equaling another fraction, there's a little mathematical trick you can employ. You can basically invert the fraction. You can switch the positions of the numerator and denominator. The REQ over 1 can simplify to just REQ. And then, of course, 6 divided by 2 is just 3. And the unit would be ohms. So that means that these two resistors can be combined into a single resistor whose resistance is 3 ohms. We're going to show a picture of that in just a moment. But first, we're going to combine these two parallel resistors in the same manner. Notice that in this case, we have to establish the common denominator on our own. Of course, we could just use a calculator, but if you want to get fancy, you'd have to multiply the denominator and the numerator by 3. And then at that point, the calculation proceeds just as it did in the previous case. You should end up with a final REQ value of 3 ohms, just like we did before. So that means that these two resistors can be combined into a single resistor whose resistance is 3 ohms. Now, we're going to look at a picture that takes these two resistors and collapses them into a single one, and then also does the same thing with these two resistors. So here is that picture. Let's take a moment to make sure we understand how we got there. Remember that we just took these two 6 ohm resistors and combined them into a single 3 ohm resistor, and then we combine these two into a single 3 ohm resistor as well. So those are shown in the diagram here and here. Our next step will be to combine the two resistors that are present in series here, and then also these two resistors who are in series as well. We recall that with a series set of resistors, the equivalent resistance is found by simply adding together the individual resistances. This is usually, in fact, I would say always a little bit easier than the parallel case. So for example, when we have a 3 ohm and another 3 ohm resistor in series, we simply add them to make 6 ohms and they will become a single equivalent resistor. Same thing here, the 3 ohms can be added to the 2 ohms to make a single equivalent resistor whose resistance is 5 ohms. So we won't even show those calculations, they're relatively easy. We're just going to simply add the two resistances together here and then also do the same thing here. Let's redraw the picture. So here is the picture again. Let's pause to make sure that we understand where it came from. We simply added the 3 ohm resistors together to make a 6 ohm equivalent resistor and then we added these two resistors together to make a 5 ohm equivalent resistor. We'll next notice that these two resistors are in parallel, so we can go back to the parallel resistor equation. And into that equation, we will plug in the 6 ohms for R1 and the 5 ohms for R2. Now at this stage, we won't show the individual steps. Hopefully you would be able to calculate an equivalent resistance here of 30 over 11 ohms. Kind of an unfriendly looking number, but that is indeed the correct answer. So we're going to take these two resistors and combine them into a single resistor whose resistance is 30 11th ohms. And there it is right there. Remember this resistor right here just came from those two here. And we'll finally note that we've got just two more resistors. These two are in series and so we can use the series formula where we simply add them together. And when we do that, we get an equivalent resistance equal to 63 11 ohms. You could use a calculator to add those together if you'd like to. 
And so we have accomplished the goal that we originally set out to achieve, which was to take a very complex looking circuit and gradually, step by step by step, boil it down into a circuit of only one resistor. Now, of course, we may celebrate, but we're not yet done with the question. We have not found the current in the 12 ohm resistor. And so this looks like a relatively daunting challenge, actually, because the 12 ohm resistor only makes an appearance right there. And we've simplified the diagram so it's essentially disappeared. It's not present in figure five right now. So what the heck is going on? Well, it turns out that what we have to do is maneuver our way backwards, starting with figure five, going to four, three, two, one, and working our way back towards the 12 ohm resistor. Now, here is a very important idea. When going backwards through a set of circuits, when we go backwards to a parallel combination, we're going to bring the voltage. And when we go backwards to a series combinations, we're going to bring the current, which is the letter I. Now that probably makes very little sense at this point, but it will as we proceed through the next sequence of the question. So before we explain these ideas further, what we need to do is return back to figure five and calculate the current that is traveling through this circuit. Now that's going to be relatively straightforward because the current is related by Ohm's law, where V is equal to I times R. Indeed, we could solve this equation for I, the current, by dividing both sides by R. So we would have V divided by R is equal to the current. And since we know the voltage as well as the resistance, we can easily calculate the current. So there we have the volts as well as the resistance plugged in. And we're left with a current of approximately 3.14 amps. So this little arrow that's shown labeled I we can write down that the value of I is 3.14 amps. Okay, so now we're prepared to go backwards, and this is where we really wanna make sure this makes sense. So we're gonna go backwards from this resistor here to these two here. Now ask yourself, am I going backwards to a series set of resistors or to a parallel set of resistors? And hopefully you can see that these indeed are a series set of resistors. So now we look at the little suggestions here in the box, and it says when we're going backwards to series, bring the current. Well, we just found the current to be 3.14 amps. So what we'll do is we'll place 3.14 amps on these two resistors. We're bringing the current with us, so to speak. So for this resistor, we have the current as well as the resistance and same thing with the other resistor. What we don't have is the volts. And so we're going to calculate that next using Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. So we're going to multiply this current by this resistance, and that's gonna give us the volts. And we'll do the same thing with this current and this resistance. And you should obtain 9.43 volts for the three ohm resistor and 8.57 volts for the 30 11th ohm resistor. Okay, so we're going to continue moving our way backwards, this time from figure four to figure three. Notice that as we go backwards from this resistor to these two, we're moving backwards to a parallel set of resistors. And when we do that, when we move backwards to parallel, we bring with us the voltage. Now, the voltage we just calculated on this resistor was 8.57 volts. So that means we're gonna bring the 8.57 volts and give it to this resistor as well as to that resistor. And there we have it. Now look carefully at these resistors and you will see that we have the volts and the ohms, which is the voltage and the resistance, but we don't have the current. And so we want to make sure we establish what the current is through this resistor as well as this resistor. Basically, you'll notice that for each resistor we encounter, we want to come up with a set of three numbers. We want to have a voltage, an amps, and an ohms. And if any of those three numbers is missing, we want to do our best to find it. So we need to find the amps for both this resistor and this resistor here. And there was an equation that we had. Remember, amps is current. And so we can solve for the current by taking the voltage and dividing it by the resistance. So let's do that. Let's divide the volts by the ohms. And you should get 1.43 amps here and approximately 1.71 amps here. Okay, so now we'll start to speed up the process. We're gonna go from this five ohm resistor backwards to where it came from, which were these two resistors here. Well, we're going backwards to series, so we're gonna bring the current with us. Remember, the current was that 1.71 amps that we just figured out. Okay, so now looking at this resistor, we have the ohms and the amps, but not the volts. So we're just gonna use Ohm's law, V equals I times R to find the volts. We'll just multiply these two quantities here and we get a roughly 5.14 volts. We've got one more move to make. We're gonna go backwards from this resistor back to the two from which it came, 
and that was these two right here. Those are in parallel, so we're going to take the volts that we just obtained and bring it backwards to these parallel resistors. And finally, we are set to solve for the current on the 12 ohm resistor by using this formula here one more time. So we're going to take the volts and divide it by the ohms. And when we do that mercifully, we obtain the final answer. It is 0.43 amps. And that is indeed the correct answer. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to provide a video solution to it.